Some 50 million people around the world are living with Alzheimer's disease. There are a few treatments, but no cure. Now, as Susan Spencer tells us, a new medication is offering hope and courting controversy. Uh, nice. <laughs> Not long ago, Joe Monmany was a hard-charging market research exec, wowing audiences at conferences all over the world. You like this job? Oh, I love the job. You were good at this job. I'd like to think I did a good job at it, yes. But gradually, he felt that the job he'd mastered was somehow mastering him. There was one situation that really stands out. We were on a call, going through a number of topics, and I had a hard time following the conversation and connecting the points. And, and, and that had never, ever happened to me before. And that's when I knew something wasn't right because it was now affecting my ability to do my job. So in 2017, Joe saw a neurologist whose diagnosis stunned him. Early onset Alzheimer's. He was 54. What did the neurologist tell you the outlook was? She actually said, you know, Joe, you know, in the next three to five years, um, you're going to start to experience some declines. And then you're likely not going to recognize your family in five to seven years. And that I had a life expectancy of around 10 years. And what was your reaction when you heard this? <sighs> Shock. Just a month later, he retired from the job he loved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Today, he makes the most of family time at home in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Who are these guys? So these are my two sons. That's Alexander on the left and my older son, Nico, on the right. But he is haunted by what lies ahead. I've had friends say, oh, you've caught it early. Hopefully they can help you. You know, you'll get better. And people don't realize that with Alzheimer's, you know, there is no cure. It can be a fatal disease. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia. The key is it's a progressive loss of brain function. And an astounding six million Americans suffer from it, says Dr. Daniel Gibbs, a neurologist in Portland, Oregon, for nearly 25 years. As a physician, what was the most difficult aspect of treating Alzheimer patients? I just felt so hopeless. Uh, and, uh, and it was hard for me to give any hope to the patients because we all knew uh, what was in store. The cause of Alzheimer's disease, broadly speaking, is really a challenge still today. A challenge that so far has evaded answers. But Maria Carrillo, chief science officer at the Alzheimer's Association in Chicago, is nonetheless optimistic. We have hope on the horizon, and that hope is that there are new treatments, not only available today, but hopefully in the near future. One approach goes after the abnormal deposits of protein found in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. They're called amyloid plaques, and they may show up decades before symptoms do. So it's possible that in the future we'll be treating it before it's even symptomatic? That is really the goal, to be able to stop this disease in its tracks, to stop it at the biological time point when proteins are starting to accumulate in the brain that ultimately will lead to those memory and behavior changes that today we know of as dementia. That's the thinking behind Adjuhelm, the first new FDA-approved Alzheimer's drug in almost two decades. Why are new medications for this disease so few and far between? Well, it's not for want of trying. It's a very complicated disease is the short answer. The excitement over Adjuhelm stemmed from its proven ability to clear those protein formations, the amyloid plaques. Would you take this drug if offered? If I was eligible and if I had the insurance coverage, I would absolutely take the drug. Um, my challenge is the price tag. I cannot afford the $56,000 price tag. $56,000. Yeah. Yeah. And for now, you know, insurance coverage drug is drug no drug guarantee. Drug Though drug maker Biogen says it does offer programs to help patients assess eligibility for financial assistance. Initially, it's hard because... But beyond the staggering cost is a more urgent concern. 
Does Aduhelm really do anything to stop symptoms? So the new drug that the FDA approved in June targets amyloid plaques very effectively. Unfortunately, the drug doesn't seem to have any clear effect on the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Aaron Kesselheim is professor of medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. He was on the FDA advisory panel on Aduhelm until he quit in protest when the agency gave the drug a green light, a move he calls probably the worst drug approval decision in recent U.S. history. But how can you say definitively that it doesn't work any more than the FDA could say definitively that it does? You can't say definitively that it doesn't work. You, you can't say definitively that it does work either. And, and in that circumstance, you need to do some more testing of the drug. The system in our country is that in order for a drug to be approved by the FDA, it has to show substantial evidence that the drug actually does work. And in this case, there isn't good evidence that the drug works. But the FDA made Adjahelm available while studies continue, citing the unmet needs for patients facing this fatal disease and concluding it is reasonably likely that reduction in amyloid plaque will result in meaningful clinical benefit. Reasonably likely sounds pretty good to patients like Joe Monmany. It's a major, major breakthrough that has taken us from drugs that only deal with the symptoms to a drug that now can deal with one of the root causes of the disease. Possibly. Possibly. Describe for me the pressure from patients and their families to find a cure. There is pressure. The experience that we have with Alzheimer's disease, most of us, is when we a relative or, or a, a, an acquaintance is in the nursing home and dwindling away, doesn't recognize anybody, and it's just you know a, a terribly frightening thing to think that's my future, and it is devastating. A devastating future Dr. Gibbs now sees through a very different lens. You're no longer practicing medicine, correct? That's right. And why is that? Well, because I have Alzheimer's. And uh, even though I'm still in the mild cognitive impairment stage of it, I stopped practicing neurology. Do you think that being an expert in this field, does that, at this point, make it harder or easier for you to deal with it? I mean, I, I know what to expect, but I also know what I need to do to, to uh, hold off the, the bad stuff at the end uh, as long as possible. Dr. Gibbs enrolled in an early trial of Adjahelm, which landed him in the ICU. He is one of a small number of patients who suffered serious side effects. My severe reaction doesn't, doesn't affect my opinion on the FDA's approval. It doesn't? No, because they're, they're rare, and I fully recovered. He says he is still optimistic about this class of drugs. And as for Joe Monmany, I've really come to realize how precious time is. So I'm much more focused on how I spend my time and who I spend it with. Over there, do you see all of them? Yeah. He says he'd consider any new medication, controversy or not. If you don't take chances, nothing good happens. Yeah, it was really pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. 